Well, for more on China's role in the World Trade Organization, let's bring in Lu Xiankun. He's a former senior WTO negotiator for China and now a managing director of Ladeco Geneva. So let's start with your reaction to the outcome of the WTO trade policy review of China today. Uh, the trade policy review on China is a two-day event, so we are still waiting to see the conclusion tomorrow in Geneva on what's the result of the trade policy review. But reading from the secretary reports and also the comments by some members, as has shown by Swiss Ambassador Jean Bovey, I think that the evaluation of the WTO and its members on uh, China's trade policy and its uh, uh, practices has been very coherent and consistent in all the past seven years, uh, generally that uh, confirming China's abiding by its rules, honoring its commitments, while pointing out some of the uh, areas that China needs to make further improvements, such as transparency, intellectual property rights, so on and so forth. But one thing I uh, noticed that uh, a clear shift uh, during the past seven trade policy reviews about China's role is that in the beginning, members' focus are mainly, were mainly on whether China delivered its commitments. Uh, but now, what China, with China's rise as an economic power and trade power, the members are more concerned about what kind of role uh, China is going to play and what contribution or more contribution that China is going to make towards the system as well as to, towards the recovery of the global economy. So I think that's the kind of shift we should be aware of. Thank you very much. Now, we saw that China's Vice Minister of Commerce, Wang Shouwen, said that since China joined the WTO back in 2001 up to 2017, China's imports of goods increased at an annual average growth rate of 13.5%. Now, that's twice as high as the global average. Yet you still have a lot of countries pushing for more access at a faster pace. What are your thoughts? Well, I mean, the figures China has given just, barely, just simply... Uh, indicates how open China's market is, uh, uh, especially on the manufacturing uh, side. But of course, uh, China, when it joined the WTO accession as a kind of more less developed uh, developing country, and the commitments it has made, made was based uh, on that level of development. As I said, uh, China is rising as an economic and trade power, war, and in markets, of course, remains one of the most important uh, in the world for many uh, countries. So that's why now people expect more from China, and especially on some manufacturing uh, sectors, such as automobile and ours, but also uh, especially on services where uh, the restric restrictions uh, are still there and quite high, uh, as compared with some other major players like the US, UK, and some others. So I think that's where people expect China to open more its markets right. for its own benefits as well as for more benefits of other countries. Now, we know that all this is happening among the backdrop of this current trade war. What sort of impact is that having on the review process? Well, generally speaking, the review process uh, reveals what China has been doing in the past two years. So that's 2016 and 2017. And, of course, this trend tension and trade war protectionism, everything is happening more recently, and escalation especially. Uh, but I think the, the, the impact on the trade policy review is because China is the main target of this protectionism. And then, so people are expecting, uh, are waiting to see what reaction uh, and what countermeasures China is going to take. For the moment, what we have seen, China is very restrained in uh, responding to that. It has taken some countermeasures corresponding to what it has been hit. Uh, but uh, generally speaking, as, uh, China has not been doing anything to escalate the situation. Uh, on, on the contrary, it has been appealing to the international community to join hands to, and to, to, to fight against that protectionism and unilateralism. I think that's all music to the ears for the membership. Now, we've seen that despite the U.S. raising its barriers to trade, China is continuing to open up its markets and increase access for foreign investors. So how do you think China's relationship with other WTO members will be impacted in this review process? Uh, well, the thing is that, uh, as I said, people are saying that China has delivered its commitments. But as a big power now, that the problem is that China cannot simply deliver its commitments as uh, 70 years ago when it joined the organization. 
So the people expect China uh, to play this leadership role and to do more. And for China's own interest, because of the uh, stalemate of the WTO negotiations and also the uh, uh, deterioration of bilateral relations with some other major players. So in China's own interest, China should do something unilaterally to in, uh, open its markets, both in manufacturing and uh, services, as well as to deregulate some behind-the-border uh, barriers. So that's what uh, recently uh, we have been witnessing, and China is gradually doing that. Of course, we're just expecting that more and more such actions are going to be in place. And so that would be good for the whole economy and right. uh, world economy as well as China itself. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. We'll have to leave it there. Professor Lu Xian Kun there, former senior WTO negotiator of China and managing director of Ladeco Geneva.